Good morning, welcome to the Baker Farm. I'm George, and today I want to share with you a mistake I made when installing my sunshade. It has to do with how I mounted it to the side of the house. About a year ago, I hung this sunshade over our deck and pool. I thought I had done a pretty good job, but turns out I hadn't. To attach it to the side of the house, I used stainless steel J-hooks to install my anchor points. Now, on first thought, and I've seen these used a lot of other places, it was a good idea. So I went outside and I saw that one of the turnbuckles had fallen apart. The J-hook on both sides could wiggle back and forth. And I realized at that point that that solution is just not gonna work. I gave it a lot of thought and realized that it was probably due to the angle in which the sunshade was, was mounted. It was pulling the J-hook from left to right rather than out. I had to come up with a better solution. So this is what I came up with. That's a pad eye mounted to a mounting block. And next, I'm gonna show you how I installed it so that you can do the same. Luckily, I've already found my studs and I know exactly where they are. In order to have a good sturdy base for your sunshade, you're gonna need a couple of things. Against, this is against vinyl siding in particular. First off, you're gonna need what's called a pad eye. And these are pretty common when installing sunshades. I got this one at Lowe's. You can get them on Amazon at Lowe's. I'll put links to Lowe's below. Pretty heavy duty pad eye. Stainless steel, because it's gonna be out in the elements. Next thing you're gonna need is some long stainless steel exterior screws. I'm using four inch ones just because I've got a lot to go through and I wanna have a good sturdy, sturdy connection. Then you're gonna need a mounting plate. You can get these at pretty much any hardware store. Um, they're designed to mount things like lights and doorbells and things to the exterior of the house. I'll have the measurements for this one down in the description. And you're gonna need a piece of two by six if you use this size. You need two, two by six treated lumber and you wanna cut it so that it fits nicely in the back of your panel. The reason for this is we're gonna cut the vinyl siding out so this will fit. We're gonna put this against the um, underlayment, which in my case is plywood, and it's gonna screw that. That way we'll have a nice, flat, secure, sturdy surface to mount this pad eye, which will go to the front here and cover that hole. And then we'll put a bead of silicone around the pad eye. So, first thing we're gonna do is this thing comes apart, and we need to measure where we're gonna cut the vinyl siding. Yeah. Now, one thing when you're measuring, you want to make sure you give enough room for these little tabs here to slide into the vinyl siding. Uh, if you don't, it might sit a little high and it won't sit flush. Um, and depending on the depth of your vinyl siding, that may vary. Once you've figured out where it needs to go, you're going to need to trace it onto the vinyl siding. What I'm doing here is I'm bumping it up right up against that trim strip to get my nice straight edge. And then I've got a small level that I'll then use to ensure that it's level. After I've got that done, then I'll take a pencil and mark around the edges of the mounting plate. And I'm just going back here and darkening up the lines. Next, you want to go ahead and cut it out. Be real careful on the vinyl siding. It's in, I'm using a box cutter there and it can slip. So you want to go slow and easy because if you push too hard or too fast, you can actually cut further than you want to cut, which is not very good. And then you'll need, of course, trim up the edges, like I said, make sure there's enough in room in there for that, uh, the uh, trim strip that goes on the outside. Now, 
and I've got this trusty little tool and I'm gonna try to show you as much as possible but basically at the end of each piece of siding you usually have a little notch where they've cut it out if you get your tool right underneath that notch you can usually wiggle it in behind the other thing that's there just kind of tilt it up and kind of pull it out all the way Well, that's it. I hope this is going to help you, keep you from making some of the same mistakes I made. Have a wonderful week, an awesome harvest, great adventures, and I hope to see you again soon.